ABC 10, Sean Cunningham, joined now by a guy that I almost talk to, it seems like, on a daily basis, the way he plays this season. And uh, even though the Kings might be going through highs and then lows, he seems to be the most consistent piece of this team. It's Rashawn Holmes. You know him. You love him. It's the Sacramento Kings. And got a couple things to talk to him about off the court. But first of all, we're going to start on the court. Rashawn, man, how you doing? Uh, doing well. Doing well. No complaints at all. You know, thanking God for health and strength and just taking it day by day. Day by day, that's all we can do. And it seems like, you know, I, I, if we rewind about a year ago, I think you were the first person I'd actually talked to in this virtual setting in a one-on-one -on -one sense. And now it seems like I do it every day. I know you guys are using yeah. it all the time. Um, it, it, I, I'm so encouraged that we're finding our way out at this point. But um, just what has this season, this year, this crazy time been like uh, just for you and your family? Oh, man, it's, it's been extremely hectic, you know, and, you know, something that we've all had to adjust to. You know, I'm a person that's used to seeing my family, you know, as much as possible. You know, I'm this is the longest I was like throughout this pandemic. It's been some of the longest times I've gone without seeing them. So, you know, it's, it's been rough some days, you know, and I know uh, if it's been rough on me. It's been rough on a lot of people out there, you know, especially mentally and emotionally. So, you know, it's, it's been tough. But like you said, just kind of glad we found our way out of it you know, uh, finding ways to, you know, get back to kind of to normal. So, you know, definitely looking forward to the future. At this time last year, I mean, there was just no basketball and it took a while before you guys resumed things in the bubble. Um, I, I guess just, does it seem like it was only just a year ago? I know it wasn't all that long ago that we were talking just March 11th when everything just shut down for, for the NBA and that final game at Golden One Center. But does it feel like it's even been a year for you? Man, you know, it's some days it feel like it was yesterday. It just happened yesterday. And it's other days where it seems like it was forever ago. So, like, it's it's just weird, you know, like, to have been in this space for so long and, like you said, for over a year with de dealing with this pandemic, you know, the you get mixed up on the day. Sometimes you don't know what day of the week it is and things of that sort. So it, it, it's been it's been strange. But, like, for me, I can remember the day like it was yesterday most of the time. So... Yeah, and it was funny because I think if we were talking about how are you going to pass the pandemic? You're watching TV, you're watching movies, you even got some new ink on yourself. <laughs> you know, we were talking. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I for mean, sure. I know it's not quite right yet. And, it, and, I, and I feel for a guy like yourself because, you know, as a journalist myself covering the team, I know the chatter from fans and even the media is already looking beyond this season and what Rashawn Holmes has on his plate in terms of free agency. Will he be here? What, you know, what that looks like. But yourself, you got here. And you got a taste of Kings fans and then it's all shut down. And then you're playing for the majority of your time in Sacramento without fans in the stands. And I feel so terribly for those fans because even though we're getting to a point where maybe they might be back in the stands soon, your game is so driven off of energy and maybe some of that feedback that would have been in the stands and, you know, you kind of draw off of that energy a little bit. I just really kind of feel for both of you guys. Oh, definitely. I mean, I've stated before, it's, it's a different game without fans out there. You know, uh, like, man, I miss just being in front of them, the different level of energy they bring. You know, it's it's really nothing like playing at the Golden One Center in front of all those fans. You know, when every big play is punctuated. You know, I mean, you can just feel so much more of an electric charge throughout the building. So, I mean, definitely, definitely miss fans. Definitely wish we can get the fans back in there as fast as possible, which they could have been in this whole season. You know, it's... Just a different game without them, honestly. And they took over, you know, the, the artificial noise. And I'll tell you, I mean, it's loud. I mean, I don't even know if you guys even oh, know. We're, sure. we're, we're right up on the concourse of Golden One Center. So we're at least at every home game. And sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like shouting down at you guys every now and then, especially during <laughs> warm-ups, just to let you know that there are some people that actually get to see you. But, I mean, yeah, you, you get game winners in preseason from Kyle Guy, then a game winner from Harrison Barnes the other day in the home mm -hmm. arena. And it just doesn't feel the same. <laughs> I and I, it's completely different. It's completely different. But the the fans have been amazing and continuing to show love in any way they can. You know, whether it was the virtual fan thing or just sending their support through social media. You know, it it all helps and it all means a lot. So just appreciate them staying engaged. Honestly, I love how you know when Hassan Whiteside got here, he had like his first block, and he says that he screamed out to the fans, and he 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 was. There's no fans there. They're all cardboard. But the first thing he saw was Vince Carter and his his cardboard cutout from when he was a king. I mean, I appreciate guys like you because even when you do wear your emotion and that and that energy and you you show all that passion for the game, whether there's fans in the stands or not, it still translates. And and I just wonder how much you draw 
that emotion for fans. I mean, you're still there. You know, people are watching, you know, you've got family that get totally invested into this game and the way they react on social media. Just how much do they feel you from an individual standpoint? Oh man, my, my family is, is, has been my fuel for years, you know, uh, since I started playing basketball, you know, just the support they've given, you know, the competitive battles with my brothers in the backyard, you know, things like that, you know, that's, it's always been there. That's always been, I've always fed off them, you know, when I'm a little low on my energy or a little, a little low, having just a bad day or things of that sort, you know, I can always depend on my family for the pickup or the extra boost of energy to get me going. And, you know, just as far as the fans in the arena go, you know, it's, it's nothing like feeding off the energy. Like, you know, I, you it's a little bit tougher nowadays because we have to do all the energy ourselves. We have to build all the energy, you know, amongst, you know, the team. You know, it's really only 15 guys and we kind of got to get each other going as opposed to you got 20,000 screaming fans out there. You know, they as soon as you walk in the building, you can feel the energy. You feed off their energy, how they're feeling, you know, how – excited they are for the game and things of that sort. So, man, I, I can't say enough how much we miss the fans. At the same time, though, I mean, I know you've played in, in cities where there are some fans in the building. Does it feel – like I've always said, going to Golden 1 Center with no fans there, I don't want it to start to feel normal. I want it to feel weird. And mm. I've been able to still say that. I mean, it still feels – just absolutely weird going into a game. Definitely. But for you guys, I mean, you want to be creatures of habit, but do you almost get used to not having fans and then you go into the ones where there are fans, you go, oh man, this is a little bit triggering? I mean, it's kind of like a adjustment. Like you, It's kind of like a zone you got to lock yourself in. Like, okay, we wish the fans were here, and, but we understand we got a job to do and we got to go out there and perform. And when you play places where there are fans, man, it's like you walk in, it's so much excitement and to actually see people there where they, I mean, I, they operate at like, I don't know, probably 10%, 20% capacity. But the fact that that energy is in the building, that it's people in the building coming to watch you play, coming to, you know, lend their support for their team, you know, boo at you when you're at the free throw line, you know, just that atmosphere. I mean, it's really no replacing that. No matter, Like I said, no matter if it's, you know, full to capacity or only operating at 10, 20 percent capacity, you know, just having that energy, having other people there watching you add into that entertainment value. I mean, you really can't replace that. Yeah, well said, man. And, I, I, you know, I, I think about when you came to Sacramento and look, I know you would have the ultimate confidence and believe in your ability and everything like that. But I don't need does this role that you have now even supersede maybe the role you envisioned you would have stepping foot into Sacramento? I mean, for me, I always thought, you know, I always saw it like this as my end. You know, I always felt like, you know, the reason why I wasn't getting on the floor in Philly or not playing as much in Phoenix, you know, I felt like given the opportunity and given the knowledge of what I needed to get better at, I could improve on it because I just knew my work ethic and knew how hard I was going to go. And being here in Sacramento now and just getting that opportunity, I just feel like my preparation made it. You know, I prepared for this moment. And now as I got the opportunity, you know, I'm able to have some success. And even now as I'm having success, it makes you even hungrier, you know, to see, OK, now what else am I lacking as a player? What can I do to make myself even more complete? You know, because you can see the, the fruits of your labor really paying dividend. And so I just want to continue working and continue to bear more fruit in that way. Is opportunity really the just the the most key thing that can happen for, for someone like you to make the jump you did? Or was there just something that clicked along the way? I mean, I think it's a mixture of both. You know, it, it's, it's really hard. And I think one of the main things about the NBA is falling into the right you know, situation and having the right opportunity. You know, uh, it's a lot of talent. And when you do get your opportunity, you really got to grab it and run with it. And as well as for me, you know, having a son, you know, somebody that's looking up to me, you know, every day, you know, trying to see what I'm going to be or what I'm going to do. You know, I just want to make sure that I'm giving my all. He sees me giving my all in what I do, you know, see me trying to strive to be the best, give my best effort. You know, every day he sees me work, you know, he understands that this is not easy. This is something that I've had to work for and just making sure I'm setting that example. So he, he's always my biggest motivation. I was getting familiar with you, your, just your story again over the past couple of weeks, because um, knowing what you just mean for this team and kind of thinking what I was thinking about just, you know, gosh, Fans are really, really missing out. But how you wound up in Sacramento, and of course the trade night deadline has come and gone, and you're still in Sacramento. But of course your name bubbled and circulated a lot, which is always the ultimate compliment when you're linked to so many different teams. Um, but but I wonder, like when you look back at, at the path that you took, 
Um, do you feel, does it feel like it's all that different or all that far removed? Or is that just light years away from that moment you were in Philly to where you are now? I, I hold on to all those moments, honestly. You know, um, understanding the player I was in Philly is the reason why I'm the player I am now. You know, criticisms that I faced in Philly, you know, and things of that sort, you know, I always held on to them to make sure I can show, you know, and not have any excuses why I shouldn't be on the floor, you know. And as I look back at, at the player I was, you know, I always see things I can continue to improve on, you know, even from Philly to now. And so I try to always hold on, you know, to the journey, I always try to hold on to the memories and keep them close by because it really makes me who I am. So it's very important for me. Have you ever experienced a season where there's just so many highs and lows? Like, I mean, they're really like winning streak one way, losing streak the next. And it's just, it, it's really hard to get a gauge for you guys. I mean, it's, it's tough. It's been a, it's been an up and down year for sure. And, you know, trying to lock in for these last 20 plus games you know, to try to do something special is where our focus is now. And, you know, I think that's the, the main thing about the NBA season is to try to just stay as even killed as possible and look forward to the next game. You know, God will, <clears throat> excuse me, God willing, you know, we get another opportunity to go out there and, you know, play basketball and try to win some more basketball games and put ourselves in the position for that play-in spot. So I think, you know, that's the main thing for us. You know, we just got to try to stay even kill, you know, not get too high, not get too low, even though the season has had its share of highs and lows so far, and, you know, try to make a run at this thing. One of the things that you added to your game this year was a three-point shot. I know it gets a lot of attention, and I'm, I'm hoping to see more of it, but um, I, I know when it was initially thought of, you mentioned you had, you had had opportunities for threes previously in your career. When you came over to Sacramento and said, hey, I want to do this. Was it somebody encouraging you to want to shoot the three more? Or was it you saying, I can do this and, and maybe the staff believing in you a little bit to do it? I mean, it was it was more of me believing in the work I put in. Honestly, you know, I work extremely hard. To, like I said, try to be as well-rounded a basketball player as possible. And, you know, with the way the game is going today, you know, that's that's something that you know I want to add. And it's something that I just continue to work on. And it was more so about me just, you know, showing it in practice, showing the coaching staff how hard I'm working and things of that sort. And, you know, as I continue to get better and even even so now I continue to work and get better at it, you know, you you show what you can do and then you get a chance in the game. So just working on, you know, perfecting it, trying to get my shot as, as, as good as good as I can possibly and then be ready to knock it down in the game. You know, you're still such a young man in this league, but do you feel it at, at points that you are – kind of that that veteran presence, that almost that veteran presence in the locker room that people can kind of lean on? I mean, I'm one of the older guys, <laughs> so I, I, I kind of feel like that's kind of the responsibility. You know, so many young guys in the locker room, you know, and I've seen a lot in my six years. You know, it's, it's crazy saying that, you know, I've already been in the NBA for six years, but that's kind of my responsibility, I feel like, is to kind of be that vet and just kind of share my experiences and things of that sort and try to you know, keep the keep the team glued together. What is the hardest part about having – I mean, look, Harrison spoke about it the other day. We're in the midst – as we're talking right now, we're in the midst of that four-game losing streak right now, and Harrison has always kind of been that wise vet in the locker room, and he's not even all that old when you think about it. I mean, he's, mm -hmm. he's in the peak of his – prime or in the prime of his career, and uh, he talks about maturity and, and – I, I was talking to somebody the other day and he says, it's, it's a lot like when you tell your kid to clean his room, it's like, at what point, when does it click uh, you know, just cause you can keep mm -hmm. telling him and showing him. And, and, and I just wonder for you guys, does it almost feel like the drum is just beating all the time and you just look around and you're just waiting for it to kind of culminate and kind of click for you guys. I mean, I, I feel like that's the NBA, you know, you kind of just, you say the same things, you build habits and you put in good days daily daily and even on the days where it seems like they're not adding up you have losing streaks and you know you have bad games you know just continuing to have your head down and continue to just work and focus on the day-to-day -day. and those good days add up and as the years go by like you said you, know, you get experience in games you realize where you can use some of the moves or some of the defensive tactics you've seen on film you start realizing a little bit more in the game the game starts getting a little slower for you and that's when it seems like everything is clicking, kind of when you got everything figured out, you've had the experiences in the game, as well as the work you put off the court meeting, kind of, you know, in the middle, I would say. And that's when, you know, things kind of click. So I just think that moment is different for each player and that moment is different for each team. And, you know, like I said, you just had to continue working, putting good days together and the moment will come.
I, I'm glad you said that because when I mean, we're talking about day where you had practice today and sometimes I just wonder, you know, cause you are so close in the locker room. Can you guys be super brutally honest with each other? Cause I know this year there isn't a lot of practice time, but there is a lot of film sessions and you guys get to really break down kind of the, what happens in the games. Do you feel that you guys can be brutally honest with each other without over stepping that line? Oh, for sure. No, those, those film sessions definitely get brutally honest, you know, and I feel like that's the only way you can get better. You know, you have to call somebody out when they're not doing their job so they know when to be in the position for the next game. So I just feel like, you know, that's very important uh, to build accountability. And that's something we definitely building in the culture here. And then, uh, you know, I mentioned what Harrison said the other day. One of the things, I mean, you guys, the play-in game is so different. And it's funny because in Sacramento, making the playoffs hasn't happened since 07. Um, I know even making the eighth seed, a lot of teams look at that as a failure. But for Sacramento, it would be so huge just to show that that next step and the level of the progress that's happening within this organization. And I know the fan base really wants it. Harrison kind of mentioned the other day about how, you know, there's maybe there's a way we just can't handle success maybe we really don't want it so well I know that's probably not the case but does it start how do you prevent those feelings for, from happening when things maybe start to compound a little bit I mean I just think it's about you know ha handling success is tough because once you have success other teams get hungry you know in the NBA you know you have to in order to take that next step once you start having success in order to maintain that success it's another level mentally you have to go and, you know, I think we've been just inconsistent, you know, just up and down, up and down. We've had success. And then when other teams kind of lock in on us a little bit more, then we kind of have a down, you know, have a down spiral. And I just feel like that's the, that's the next step for the team mentally, especially knowing we have success to not get bored with success, continue doing the things that got us there and just become a good team consistently. And I think that's the next step. That's yeah, that's well said. And when you think about just what kind of lays ahead for you guys, I mean, there's a there's still time, you know, you, but it feels like uh, I know, look, I, I hear from the fans a lot. And I know you do, too, unless you, you know, turn your phone off and just try to shun social media and what the, what the fans want to say. But are you a lot like them in a way where you can look at a team like the Lakers coming in shorthanded or the Bucks coming in shorthanded? And when you lose those games, it feels like missed opportunities. I mean, most definitely. I mean, you just like you understand games you have to win, you must wins. And especially when you're fighting for a spot, like we are, we are in the midst of fighting for it right now. You know, we have an understanding that, you know, we need to win this game. And, you know, it's, it's tough when you lose games like that, but you just have to move forward. You know, it's, that's the beauty of the NBA season. It's so many games coming so fast. You kind of are forced to forget about the last game you had or, you know, a bad showing, you know, a couple nights ago. You know, you have to get ready for the next one. So I just think, you know, we have to lock in better these next few games, you know, um, and just make sure we put ourselves in the best position to win. You know what I'm saying? Just make sure mentally we do everything we can to prepare and let the chips fall where they may. And final kind of basketball question for you. I know these, these new guys that you've incorporated, um, I mean, you've got four guys that come over and trade. You just, you know, bring in Damon Jones. I just, it's amazing how three of those guys have been able to fit in and be so cohesive and address some needs right away. Are you, have you been impressed with the way they've been able to acclimate so quickly? Almost definitely. They came in ready to play, ready to play hard. And, you know, they bring what they bring to the game and to this team. And I think going forward, those guys are going to be huge down the stretch. And we're going to need them. We're going to need them. We're doing a lot in practice with them, you know, making sure they get acclimated, get more comfortable as fast as they can. And, you know, getting ready for the stretch run. Well, and one of the reasons I brought, we definitely have you here, is that shirt you're wearing right there, the Autism Rock shirt. And, you know, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I know. I know people can are going to want to get that shirt, and I know they can. Um, what can you tell us about your involvement with Ro Autism Rocks and, and just, you know, what kind of inspired you to get involved with this? Oh, yeah, for me, well, uh, I have a close friend of my family. We, um, he, we work closely with him, you know, on a lot of you know, different deals and things of that sort. Uh, his name is Doug Brown, and he recently found out his son was diagnosed with it. And, you know, just getting the info from him, understanding, you know, where it's coming from, what autism really is and things of that sort, you know, it's just something I wanted to be a part of to help raise awareness for as much as I can, you know, especially with it hitting so close to home. And that's kind of how it came, you know, autism rocks was an idea he had. And, you know, I just wanted to get behind it, show my support and, you know, raise as much awareness as possible. I also know Doug as well, and it's a fantastic organization to be a part of, but I know some people can hear autism, think one thing, 
and learn about autism and immediately think something else. What was just kind of your reaction in learning about autism yourself? It was just, you know, it, it was very, very, you know, informative, important for me to know things like that. Because I feel like for years I was kind of really ignorant on what autism really was and, you know, how, you know, slight changes and things it could be really. So I think just sitting down and getting knowledge from them, understanding, you know, how I can really help, you know, in situations like that and, you know, understanding how to how to help a person, you know, that's, that's maybe suffering from autism. And, you know, things of that sort and just being more available, being more hands on. I think that's something that really was good that came from from it for me. Yeah. And the proceeds to get that shirt direct go directly to the UC Davis Mind Institute. Uh, I know they're doing it all month long that's through good. the 30th. Uh, I mean, I, what do you think of the shirt? I, I think I think I could see. Oh, the man, arena I think it's dope. I, yeah. think it's dope. Man, I got some, I got some shoes. I'm a rock with it. That's, that's going to be pretty nice. So. No, I think it's really dope. You know, what he what what's going on with Autism Rocks is amazing. You know, the like you said, all the proceeds going to UC Davis. And, you know, it, it's important. It's important. It's an important topic to have, especially right now. So it's, it's, it's amazing. I'm glad you mentioned the shoes because that was my next question. I imagined if you're going to have something on the court, special design. I mean, can you unveil it here? Do you know do you know what it looks like yet? Oh, uh, man, just just you got to just wait on it. You got to just wait on it. You know, it's, it's going to be something coming soon. But, you know, I, I ain't going to do no reveals just yet. <laughs> Speaking of those custom shoes, I, I you know, Tyrese Halliburton, your rookie. He's oh, uh, yeah. The, he had the, the thrillers out there the other day, which which man, on the. the- <laughs> Those was hard. I told him those were the hardest ones of the season to me. Like, me personally, <laughs> the thriller joints, man, there's nothing like that. I'm like, I like that you can be honest, but, but I mean, some people would be like, I can't tell him he's a rookie. I can't let him think that way. Oh, no, I had to let him know. Those, those were the hardest ones he had. Like, I mean, he didn't came with a bunch of different flavors this year, but the thriller, man, ain't no beating those. Not for me. You're going to see what he come with next. <laughs> so we'll see you with the custom shoes pretty much. You're going to go all month throughout the whole month? Uh, we gonna we gonna we gonna customize one game. I'm I'm pretty sure. I'm not really sure yet. Like we trying to get it together as we as I'm speaking to you now. You know what I'm saying? But definitely want to do something. Uh, want to do something crazy, some crazy colorway with the shoes, and I think it's gonna be dope. That's awesome, man. Uh, one other thing I wanted to ask you about, and it's not something I'm all that versed on, so I'm glad you're here to tell maybe tell me what it is. I wanted to ask you about humanly. Can you can you let people uh-huh. know what this what this what this uh. I don't, I don't even know if it's an app. I mean, what can you say about Humanly? Yeah, Humanly, what it does is it removes, like, bias, you know, discrimination from kind of like the job search. Like, it kind of filters everything out and you get direct, like, a direct, I want to say, interview, you know, uh, regardless of how, you know, your gender, your race, anything, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's just about leveling uh, even in the job field and the job search for everybody, you know, whether you're black, white, anything doesn't matter. Well, if you qualify for the job, you're going to get the best opportunity to get it. Oh, that's awesome. And that, that seems like stuff that we need to see more of. And uh, when I first heard about it, I was I was trying to picture how humanly actually worked as an app, but as an app or a tool or a resource for companies or for even job applicants. I mean, hearing about it is one thing and seeing it in action is another. And I, I, I think it's tremendous. But uh, for you to be behind that and maybe seeing some of some of the fruits of the labor that you're putting behind that app is fantastic. I appreciate it. And yeah, it's, it's something I'm totally behind. Like I said, the most qualified person for the job, regardless of background or anything like that, that's who's going to be in the best position to get it. And I, like I said, I just think it's fair. It kind of evens the playing field and definitely was something I wanted to get behind. And it's definitely going to be useful. I mean, you have so many people who are, you know, have been who've unfortunately because of the pandemic have to, you know, go back and try to rejoin the workforce again. And right. I, right. I can see some real world things happening with this. So I, I commend you for for being behind that. And I can't wait to hear some success stories for it. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. Appreciate the support. Yes, sir. Well, I appreciate you, man. I, it's been a joy to talk to you all season long and, and go through this journey with you, even if it is virtually and I can't sit there and, you know, wisecrack or you hear me say some crazy shit in the locker room every, every <laughs> year. So, so uh, I do miss the interaction, but I'm glad we can still do this. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Definitely miss you in the locker room as well. So can't wait till we can get back to it. <laughs> all right, man. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much, Rashawn. Appreciate you. All right. Yes, sir.